I finished my computer science degree last December and started working a full-time software engineering position recently. As someone who spends a lot of time teaching others in the field after learning most of what I share entirely on my own, I thought it might be interesting to share a little bit about my experience in the education system culminating in acquiring a CS degree and whether or not it was worth it for me. I'll also explore into whether it might be worth pursuing for others. This is the type of video people would normally just record their face for, but I don't do that, so enjoy staring at some footage from one of my games. Alright, so let's get into it. Was my degree worth it? Well, most people see the value of a degree being that it helps you to get a job. There are two paths to get into the software industry that I want to contrast here. There are, of course, more ways too, but first is the traditional method which is to graduate high school, go to university, get a computer science degree and an internship, then get a job after graduation. The second option I'll talk about is to teach yourself using the plentiful resources on the internet, many of which are free. I took somewhat of a middle road between these two options. I was homeschooled my whole life until I went to college, meaning that I learned at home outside of the formal education system. Homeschooling has its downsides, but I'm mostly going to focus on how it got me into self-education here. By 5th grade, around 11 years old for those of you not in the US, I was responsible for following the curricula from the books myself, then doing the homework and taking the tests, which my mother or siblings would grade. This gave me significant experience in teaching myself from textbooks. Being in a class of one also meant that I could go at my own pace. I didn't have to wait for 20 students to understand the subject before moving on, and I didn't have to wait between lectures. As I've mentioned in other videos, I got a little bit bored with the extra time I had when I was 12 and started learning to code using resources on the internet. Just looking at the self-education side here, by the time I graduated high school at 18, the free online resources I used to learn got me to the point where I was making 25 an hour from solo game development and 35 an hour freelancing. Looking back now, after having worked multiple actual software jobs, I also had sufficient technical skills for an entry-level software engineering position. However, a job also involves social skills, which will come into play in my pro-con breakdown later. Now jumping back a bit to when I was 16, we can look at how I actively pursued both the self-education and traditional paths. The traditional path will vary by country, and within the US, it varies by state. I live in Florida, which has a surprisingly large impact on the cost-benefit analysis of higher education. In most four-year degrees in the US, including most computer science degrees, two entire years of the degree go towards general education. This is stuff like humanities, the sciences, math, writing, and more. You really only have two years actually specializing in your area of study. Biology 2 was a required class for my computer science degree as a result. I find this quite annoying since I get paid to simulate rocket flights, not for knowing that flatworms poop out of their mouths. Now you might be thinking that this sounds a lot like the subjects in high school. In fact, it is. In the US, you can take your first two years of college classes during high school while having them count for both high school and college. This is called dual enrollment, which is free in Florida and many other states. Yes, that's free college in the US. So while I was in my last couple years of my homeschooled high school, I dual enrolled at my local community college with the goal of completing my first two years of college and getting a two-year degree for free by the time I graduated. I still hadn't lost all my baby teeth by the time I was going to classes at college. I remember wiggling my molars with my tongue while sitting through lectures. Overall, I would say my community college experience was much more positive than my university experience later on. Students in community colleges are made up of a lot of dual enrolled students and adults going back to college, which makes for a much better learning environment than most universities. With all that, I graduated high school with my associate's degree at 18 in December of 2019. I also racked up a few wins in programming competitions, so even though I hadn't actually specialized into programming and formal education yet, I wanted to see if I could break into the industry and get an internship before going to college. Remember, I was also making pretty decent money freelancing and doing solo game dev at this point. I applied to a bunch of companies starting a bit before I graduated, and used personal connections I had to try and find an internship. After several months of applying and only getting one extremely informal interview through a connection, things looked kinda grim. I may have gotten pretty close to pulling in Eric Barone, the developer of Stardew Valley, and just gone and done my own thing with a full-time commitment instead of the part-time commitment you've seen on my channel for the last few years. 
Anyways, I lucked out and finally got an internship at a small electronics company in the space industry through a connection I had. I ended up making less than half of what I could make freelancing at first. All this really shows in my opinion just how difficult it can be to break into the industry with the non-traditional route. It certainly can be done and it's cheaper and more time efficient if you can pull it off, but you'll probably have to expect some humble beginnings while trying to break into the industry. In my case though, I realized that the small company I was working for would be more flexible in negotiation than most companies out there as long as they were getting their money's worth. After proving myself, I was able to renegotiate everything and get promoted. I actually went back after getting my degree because they were open to hiring me for a 32 hour per week position with full time benefits such as healthcare. After getting promoted the first time, I did consider skipping my computer science degree because I had broken into the industry and had gotten a pretty good deal even without a computer science degree. The issue was that I probably would have been stuck working for small companies if I ever had to change companies because the bigger companies would have a harder time matching compensation since they often use a more rigid education and years of experience based system. This is changing pretty fast, but it's still common. Since I'm from Florida, we had two notable things incentivizing me to get a computer science degree. First, we have Bright Futures, which covers significant portions, or in my case, all of my tuition for any public university in Florida because of my performance on standardized testing. It seemed like most in-state students at my university in computer science had this scholarship. On top of that, the Florida government passed a law in 2021 that waived half my tuition on most of my classes because I majored in STEM. As a result, a sizable portion of the computer science students in Florida get paid to take their classes. I'd recommend looking into these scholarships and other incentives applicable to your region if you're considering getting a degree since the actual monetary cost of a degree is incredibly important to consider when deciding whether college is the best option for you. Anyways, I ended up getting my computer science degree even though I already knew most of the content taught in the software portions of the degree. I was able to get an internship through my university with just a couple applications which really showed just how much easier it is to break into the industry while affiliated with a university. That company also offered to hire me as a full-time software engineer after I graduated. And that's pretty much the end of my story in the education system. Hopefully that served as an interesting anecdote that opened up a wider range of options to consider. To answer the original question, I do think that my degree was probably worth getting when the monetary factors are taken into account. My technical skills would have been better and I would have completed a bunch of significantly more interesting personal projects if I had put that time into self-education and the type of stuff I share here on YouTube instead of going to university, but I would have had less work experience, worse social skills, and probably worse job prospects partially for just not having a degree. As a risk-averse person, university was simply the less risky option. Now I want to get into some of the benefits of each option. The opportunity cost of each option with respect to the other makes up its own con list, so I'll just cover the benefits of each. First, let's talk about the self-education route. It's much more time efficient, provided moderate aptitude in self-education, much more flexible with your schedule if you're already working in another industry, it's cheaper in most cases, and finally, it's more focused in developing technical skills actually directly used in the workspace, where you can get more experience on larger projects that you just really don't see in universities. Now for university. It has a more structured course lineup, which is helpful if you don't know what you need to learn. It's more balanced in some of the fundamentals, which can be good for developing your thought process and your knowledge of how things work. It's basically the veggies of your learning diet. There are more group projects and social opportunities, which are good for developing social and collaborative skills. There are also the networking and internship opportunities, which, I mean, internships are, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons to go to universities. Universities also give you actual feedback on your work from people that hopefully know what they're doing. And finally, universities stop you from getting pay capped or being held back based on education level in more traditional companies. Universities really do lean into the whole teaching you how to think and learn idea instead of focusing too hard on specific technologies. This makes sense to some extent since it's hard to know what you want to specialize in at that stage of life. Also, the software industry is an industry that requires people to constantly be learning, so one of the most useful skills to have is the ability to learn and improve quickly. That's not to say that you don't get that generalized learning ability from self-education. 
In fact, I think that self-education means that you'll probably be a much more resourceful learner and oftentimes you will have more experience in longer term projects than what the class system of university allows for. This makes getting an internship extremely important and getting the full value out of going to university since it covers the blind spots of formal education. There's one more thing I want to mention about higher education that's a bit of a con that needs more explanation. As we all know, we had COVID lockdowns in most countries for a while and students learned remotely. While some students did fine, most struggled. As a result, academic performance and academic standards have begun to drop sharply. This greatly devalues higher education and makes it even more important for you to put in effort to get the most out of a university if you choose to take that route. It's so much easier to just pass everything without putting in effort after COVID. Many of my pre-COVID classes at my community college were more rigorous and challenging than my post-COVID classes at my rather well-respected university. I suspect that this issue will persist and the standards will continue to decline as people who had their education stunted at earlier and earlier ages get into universities. Between the trend of declining academic standards and the trend of companies realizing that the core skills and thought process needed in the software industry can rather easily be learned online, it seems reasonable to speculate that the self-education option will continue to become more viable as time passes. There may be a day in our lifetimes where the clear answer is that you should teach yourself through the internet, but we're not there yet, and who knows, maybe the AGI singularity is both possible and happens before that time. Anyways, for the time being, picking university or self-education is similar to financial advice. No specific choices can be recommended without the full context of your personal situation. You could start by breaking down the costs of each, both the time cost and the actual monetary cost for your institution of choice, including living expenses. Getting those into semi-concrete numbers will help base the framing of the two options a lot better. Some things to look at are the state of your skills, your personal connections, and your risk tolerance. In my case, the cost was fairly even split considering scholarships and I had sufficient technical skills, but I lacked connections and I didn't like the risk of getting stuck looking for a job when I live in an area full of more traditional companies that absolutely require degrees. Even with a job already, I had limited options if I ever needed to change companies, which is extremely common in the software industry. Self-education isn't always the riskier option though. If you already have a job in a different industry and you would have to go into serious debt to get a degree, university could be seen as a riskier option. With all that said, keep in mind that I'm a rather fresh graduate myself and I could be wrong about some of the things I've said here. I've taken gap semesters to work in the industry and I took a mix of both routes, so I thought I would have a more balanced perspective that would be worth sharing. Thanks for watching, subscribe, wishlist Yannok, the game in the background, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.